Can't think of a better way to start my week than talking with y'all. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Monday, February 21st. Now, we're going to do the same thing in this show as we do in all of our shows. We're going to focus in on OTC and penny stocks. We are looking for stocks that have potential, that can make us money. Now, we used to look for these at the top of the charts, which is really a little silly because after they've shown all their colors, they really don't have a lot left over for the next few days. So now we're looking at stocks under the radar, hiding behind the bushes. I am looking at the charts First, I'm ignoring the news as my primary source of catalyst, and I'm using the charts. I'm looking for a setup, a breakout. Then I go looking for that news, and it's got me everywhere. I mean, you do realize a penny stock is any stock under five bucks, and they're on every single market. So I am doing research everywhere, including the OTC. Absolutely, all that news right there. That comes from the OTC market. There's about 10 days worth of news there that I've gone through. The oldest is up at the top, newest is down here at the bottom. And this is prime news, folks. These are your mergers, your acquisitions, new deals, new technologies. So if you haven't had time to go through the news, don't you worry about it, none. I've done it for you. It's right there. Now, when I dive into doing my research on an OTC stock, this is my number one site the otcmarkets.com website. I love this site. It's not perfect, but it's up to date. Every single day, FINRA and the SEC update this site with all that pertinent, relevant information we're looking for. Share structure, financials, filings. Why run around the internet looking for current information amongst all of that old stuff? Just come here. Get it right the first time you find it. Like I said, I love this site. It saves me a lot of hassle. So let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. That's looking pretty sad. Oh, God, please give us a bump. Not enough. Everything is down. Dollar volume, it's a little higher. I think the last time we looked at it was 1.2 or 1.3 billion. We're at 1.5, but we need to be up at 2 billion. Share volume, we're still under 10 billion. We really do need to get there. That's our second gear. You can actually see the market changing when we hit 10 billion. 4.6 billion like we did today, ain't cutting it. And trades, well, it looks like we have found a new median. We were stuck between 250 and 300,000 trades for at least six months. Now we can't seem to get back up to 250. Every time we look at it, we are below 250. So things are looking very bleak still on the OTC market. All right, let's go see how my treasure hunt went today with these hot charts. I found some. I looked for lingering news, and I think I've got some that might fit the bill. Let's see what I got. First stock we're going to take a look at is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is ticker DHC, Diversified Healthcare Trust. Now, I found this company the way I'm finding all the companies we're looking at, by looking at the charts first. Then I come running over here, going through her news presses or filings, looking for a catalyst. Now, DHC, she's got a nice chart, looking ready for a breakout. So, I came over here and I found no news presses at all, not old or new. But I did find a bunch of filings and I think they're enough to get this chart ignited. So DHC, she finished the day just a little over 79 cents and fell just a little over 8%. Now the price, we have to take that into consideration if it's under a dollar and it's a major exchange stock, which this is, it's on the NASDAQ. Anytime the price falls under a dollar, they're in hot water. They're in the danger zone. They could get kicked off of the major exchanges if they're down there too long. Now, this company's been down there for a while. So long, they have gotten their warning. They got six months to get that price up over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. If they do that, everything is great. Well, they got a deadline. They've got until July 18th of this year to get that price up over a dollar for 10 days straight, or they will end up on the OTC market. So that is one thing to consider. So what is this company all about? Well, I've got no description here and there is no news, so I can't jump into that. So thank God for financial filings. We've got a pretty decent description here. The company says we are a right that is organized under Maryland law, which owns medical office and life science properties, senior living communities, and other healthcare related properties throughout the United States. 
As of September last year, we wholly own 379 properties, including eight closed senior living communities located in 36 states and Washington, D.C. As of September 30th last year, the gross book value of our real estate assets at cost plus certain acquisitions is $7 billion. We're not talking about a small company here. Now, in saying that, I do want to bring this up. It is a right. Now, rights can be strange. We looked at a right a couple weeks ago I thought was ripe for the pickings, and it was. The problem was we weren't allowed to trade it. It was on the OTC. It was a pink, but it was a special type of security. And when I tried to buy it, a warning came up telling me this fact. So I called up FINRA and I said, why can't I trade this? They said, well, it's a special type of security and you've got to have $1.5 million worth in your portfolio just to trade a pink on the OTC. It's like, you've got to be kidding. So I asked him, is there any notation on the page so we can see that before we try to buy a stock? He says, there's no way to know until you try. So I don't know. DHC could be in that category. Maybe not. You'll find out when you try to buy it. So what was the relative volume around DHC today? Not bad, she jumped. She went from 3.2 million to 5.5 million. So she's definitely on the radar. Share structure, had to go look this one up. We have 237 million outstanding and the float is virtually all of that, 236 million. That's what Google says and I couldn't find any other numbers. So it's a pretty big float. Financials for DHC. Looking good. Look at this. We got over a billion dollars a year for the last four years. I know it's billions because I got to put three zeros behind any of the numbers down here. Now, out of that $1.3 billion they did in 2021, they got to keep 291000 Looking at the quarterly to get an idea for last year. Well, they're doing it just a little over $300,000 every quarter like clockwork. Just steady like that. Disclosures. All right, we've got some information over here. First off, I want to point out all these 13 G's. You see all of these at the end of December and all through January. These are beneficiary ownership forms. I'll show you one. You come into here, it'll tell you. Uh, sometimes they lay them out differently. Let's see here. Do, 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 IRS. No, 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 no. Um... This person has bought 6.3 million shares. They now qualify for 2.6% of the company. And you can get more than just one of these inside of these filings. And we have got one, two, three, four, five. There is at least one new owner in each one of these. And there could be five, six, or seven. You just don't know until you dive in. And I haven't done that yet. But we've got five of them here in the last month that have all just bought enough shares in this company that they qualify for ownership. What do they know that we don't know? Then we've got three 8Ks here recently. And I've got all three up here. One of them, I already told you, they have until July 18th to get their bid price requirement back. The other two, one of them came out uh, not too long ago, February 14th, we amended the agreement governing our credit facility on our credit agreement. They are changing their liquidity requirement from 200 million down to 100 million. That's internal, really doesn't work with us too much. And then the other one, they made a deal. Now, I don't know how long ago they made this deal, but this is about tweaking it. They're talking about share structure and how much percentage of ownership and stuff like that. But on February 2nd, in connection with the proposed acquisition of Alaris Life, blah, blah, blah. So Alaris Life is a company that they are closing in on right now. It's an acquisition that they've made. You've had a whole bunch of people just invest in this. And as I said, there is no news. There is nothing but those filings. So we've got all the new ownership. We have a new deal that's closing. And we've got them having to push that price up over a dollar for 10 days. Sometimes that can be a catalyst. Sometimes it can be an anchor. Not quite sure in this case, but I like the way the charts are set up. Well, I know what you're thinking. Boy, that chart looks familiar. I'm glad to hear you say that because that is the standard setup for a breakout chart right there. Get used to seeing it.
This is ticker DHC, six month, four hour chart, and we're gonna be doing all of our charting on, you guessed it, think or swim. This is my free trading platform. You get it just by signing up with TD Ameritrade. So six month, four hour chart. Six months ago, we had a high of $2.24. She has been falling for a very long time under the 200 till she hit this low at the end of December at 61 cents, a 400% drop. Once she hit this low bubble, things changed. She is not falling anymore. She hit it and now she's going more or less sideways. She had a change of pace here once she crossed over that 50, coming out from underneath the nine, crossing the 20, crossing the 50, got a good surge, and now she's just hanging around that 50, and now she's busted out again. Again, from underneath the nine, crossing the 20, crossing the 50, and crossing the 200, with just a little bit of pause right there, and then she's continued on, and now she's pulling back again. Now, I expect that. You see what we had here? She broke through the, two, the 50 real strong, and then started bouncing and arguing with the 50, and then took another leap. Well, that's that's what I expect here. You get your big surge to crush it, to get on top, and then you start negotiating. You start bouncing across the top, maybe a little bit underneath, and then boom, you catch it. So that's why we're watching this right now. She's gotten her first leap up on top of that 200. Technicals, they are pulling back right now. There was a lot of strength, but everything is starting to pull back, including our RSI, which has had a big drop for today. 20 day, one hour view. All right, so she was hanging around her 200 up and down and then lost it. Fell way down here into that low bubble and had a distinct change off of this low. She has been bouncing strong, crossing every SMA, getting up over top of that 200. And then today she had a lot of pullback. The whole bloody day, she came right back down here to where she was leveling off yesterday, which could be a very good support for us right in this area right there. You can see how all these prices were sitting on it, and now this is sitting on it. That could be a support that she bounces off of. As you can see, our volume is getting stronger. We had an increase today of what, 3.2 to 5.5 million, something like that. So volume is coming in. Of course, our technicals are gonna look desperate right now. They are showing all of this today, which doesn't look good, but it is setting itself back up. Now, I'm kind of curious. I'm gonna grab my Fibonacci here and I'm gonna poke the bottom of this and I'm gonna to go to the top and I'm gonna see where the 50% mark is. I'm looking for the halfway point. It is right there. Now I'm gonna get rid of this Fibonacci so that you can see my halfway point. Ooh, see we're way above it. So from our surge, from the bottom to the top, that is the halfway point. I don't want to see the price come down any lower than 50%. I don't want 49 or 48. I want 50 or 55 or 60. This is looking good up here. This is looking really nice. Five day, five minute. All right, there's that low bubble on our five minute. She worked her way up over that 200. You can see she was beating her head on it. She was not showing signs of wanting to go down. The 50 day was coming up. The 200 in the middle, the price got squeezed right there and it had no choice but to pop right on up she went. And now she's riding on her 20 day SMA. Nine and 20, she's graduated off of that 50. That's what we like to see. She hit a high here of 88 cents and she's pulled back to 79 and it looks like she's really bouncing across that, doesn't it? Boink, 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 like she is going to respect that. Now looking at our technicals, this is my PPO, my percentage price oscillator. It's a lot like the MACD, you read them the same. MACD uses the full price, percentage price oscillator, that's right, uses a percentage of the price. Well, you see how that blue line is coming down? This here is my, ooh, ooh, we just had a jump, look at that, <laughs> wow. All right, I was expecting her to bounce off of this and she did. She just bounced all the way up to 83 cents and this is a perfect setup. You see how these lines right here, they're coming closer together like that. The price is falling, guaranteed, when you see the blue line and the red line coming together. When you see them coming apart like that, 
guaranteed your price is climbing. That was picture perfect. I really like that. Our MACD just shot up. Our RSI is just shot up. That was a huge bounce right there. I think she's going to try to get back up on top of that 200, folks. So there's proof in the pudding. I think she was coming back down to a big support that she wants to jump. And you got to remember, she's right on top of the 200-day SMA on our four-hour, which is big. She was right down here. She's bounced up. Now she's up on top of her nine. This is looking beautiful, folks. I would keep my eye on DHC. I don't see super strong catalysts, but it's not going to take a whole lot when your charts are already warm. One little spark can set this thing on fire. All right. I got another stock I want to share with you. Come on. Ah, this next stock has got me excited. This is ticker ARWIF, R-Way Core. This is a spin out from Nextex. Nextex is also on the OTC market, currently about 56 cents. And R-Way is using their technology for their products. Now they haven't got any new filings, but they do have some lingering news and they've got a warm chart. But what has really got me excited about this company is what they're doing. Now, I'm not sure if their technology is new, but what they're doing with this technology is. I think we need it. I think we want it, and I think we'll use it every single day. So much so that I think their product will be just as popular as Google Maps. I am not exaggerating. And I'm using Google Maps specifically because it fits. ARWIF, she finished today at 85 cents with just a little over 2% drop. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She's got both those green ticks I'm always harping to you about. Transfer agent verified and verified profile. These are real important, especially if you're in a stock for a long hold, especially a pink. Pinks don't get a lot of validated information. And that's what these two green ticks are doing. They are showing you there's a lot of validated information that's been verified behind the scenes. Now, if you're just going to be trading this for a short swing or a day trade, don't worry about this. Isn't going to bother you at all. So what is this company all about? Well, they tell us here that our way is a no code spatial computing platform for the real world metaverse. Real world metaverse? <laughs> That's an oxymoron. It enables augmented reality, enhanced indoor navigation and wayfinding solutions for large multi-purpose venues enabled by marker-based tracking using QR codes. Visitors can access a venue map by scanning a QR code with their smartphone. So what it is, is GPS inside. It's GPS for inside buildings, whether you be at a stadium, uh, an auditorium, a mall. How many of you have ever gotten lost in a mall? Hello. <laughs> Your husband or wife says, meet me at such and such a store. And you're thinking, where's that store? So the first thing you got to do is locate a map. Where is a map? Once you find a map, you got to figure out which way you got to go. You're turning your head so much, you look like a kid who's lost his parents. So what they've done is they've taken these interior building maps and they've put them on the blockchain for you so that you're going to be able to use your phone in front of you, see everything live, and then have some augmented reality pointing you along the way. But it does a lot of other things too, and I'm not real sure about all of it. Uh, the spatials sounds pretty interesting. This sounds like a way to preserve a moment in time and space. What I mean by that, let's say you're at Niagara Falls and you're right by the falls. So you record the moment and then you pin it in that place right there. So when your friends come to Niagara Falls, when they get to that place, bing, they know there's a moment that they can tap into. And your moment is sitting there waiting for them to look at it at the same time that they're living their moment in the same place. They've also got guided tours that this can be used for location intelligence, and all sorts of other things. I'm sure they're going to come up with more and more ways to use this pinpoint location. It is good up to one centimeter. That's how accurate it is. Just one centimeter off. That is excellent. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, let's see. Oh, not good. She dropped over 50% from just 11,000 shares to under 5,000 shares. She is definitely under the radar. 
share structure for our way. All right, I had to go look this up. They tell us here it's 12 million. We got 26 million in the float. Well, I did jump into the pinks. I couldn't find any information there. It just wasn't there. So I went to Google and I only found one number, one, and it was 26 million. So just like the last stock we looked at, virtually all of the outstanding shares are in the float. Financials for this company. Well, this is the sad part. Not only do they not show us anything, but I did jump into a financial and they show nothing. And I don't understand why. It looks like the company should be making money. I mean, the news we're going to look at says they're about ready to make money. They're now making money, but I thought they already were. Maybe they're not because there's no assets. There's no income. They don't have any revenues right now whatsoever. Disclosures. Well, as I said, they've got no filings that have come in. All we've got is news, and there's not a whole lot of that. This isn't all their news. This is news about them and other companies. So I've got one piece of news here we need to jump into and take a look at. This came out February 14th. Our Way Core signs multiple new deals as $44 billion indoor navigation industry accelerates, shifting to augmented reality navigation. Our Way is excited to announce that the company has signed six new deals for its software development kit, which showcases the increasing demand for this disruptive technology. The deals range in size from $600 to $10,000 based on the usage of the platform. The company is seeing significant and accelerated interest and deal flow from augmented reality agencies, large corporations, and brands that are looking to enhance their wayfinding experience. The metaverse is new. That's where they're working. This isn't the internet. It's the metaverse. It's the blockchain. And we're just now starting to get that growing. So their business is in the babe stages right now. The company is now signing up new creative agencies weekly. The global indoor positioning and indoor navigation market is projected to reach $44 billion by 2025. That's not too far away, folks. And how many companies are doing indoor navigation? I don't know of a lot. So there is a lot of money to be made here. And they're not just working in the United States. They're working abroad. They're in Germany, the Middle East, North Africa, Saudi Arabia. So this application can be used everywhere. Who's going to make use of it the most? I think we're all going to use it. Don't we all use Google Maps? Absolutely. I think this will be just as relevant. Let's go take a look at that chart. We are now taking a look at ticker ARWYF. This is a six month, four hour chart, but it really doesn't cover six months because she came on the market November 14th. She started her run at 62 cents and hit a high bubble here of $2 and she's been falling ever since. Hit a recent low here of about 75 cents and from that low, she's changed direction and she is now pushing towards that 50 day SMA, negotiating her footing up there right now. Our volume has been growing all this time. It is getting stronger and stronger. Our technicals, they're weak, but they show they're trying to recover. We, we got a crossover trying to occur right here, though it doesn't look imminent, actually. Our MACD is trying to get over that signal line, but it's also pulling back a little bit right now. And our RSI is down at 48. She is fighting for placement right now. One hour, 20 day view. So she's going sideways here from her dollar, took this huge fall down to 75 cents, bouncing off of that low. She's gotten on top of her nine, on top of her 20, fighting, there she goes, she's on top of her 50. She's had a dip bouncing off of her 20 day and she's trying to negotiate that right now. The 20 is just about ready to cross the 50, hopefully pushing that price up. You can see our volume was increasing today, getting stronger all through the day. Our technicals are still weak. Everything is actually showing down pressure right now. Five day, five minute view. There's our low bubble. She jumped over that 50 day SMA, hit a high here of 96 cents, came back down, is arguing with our 50 day, right? She's got a bounce here, a bounce here. 50 day is trying to cross the 20. That's not good. You want the biggest SMAs on the bottom, the lightest SMAs on the top. So right now, it looks like she's about ready to come down. But I think she's in a position 
where we should be watching it. Now, I'm a little surprised she's not making any money, but she's a brand new company. She's just gotten on the market. We see she's doing business. And I'm telling you folks, everybody is going to want this. I mean, just, I can't even think of all the different ways that this is going to be able to use. But once it catches fire, I think it is going to blaze. So maybe not tomorrow, maybe not the next day for ARWIF, but I think this is a stock you need to be watching. Look for that vibe him to come in. That's probably when she's going to tear it up. But right now she is negotiating a setup, trying to get her foot right so she can make that jump. All right. Got one more for you. Let's go see what that is. This last stock we're taking a look at. How should I introduce this to you? I know. Four. <laughs> this is a golf stock. This is ticker DSHK, Drive Shack Inc. Now they do have filings, they do have news, and they've got a wild chart, which is really what caught my interest here. Now the company has had some hard times here recently. They just in December delisted themselves from the New York Stock Exchange. They did this to themselves, pulled themselves off the major exchange, put themselves down onto the OTC. I believe it was the pink. And then they uplisted themselves to the QX. So despite all of that, the company still looks pretty good to me. I think we can still make some money off of this. So DSHK, she finished the day at about 37 and a half cents with about 1% gains. She is on the best tier, the QX. This is the best tier because not only do you have to audit your financials, you got to give us everything you know about your company, all the information. This is the most transparent tier on the OTC market, the most trustworthy. I see they have a verified profile here, but I don't see a verified transfer agent. That's a bit curious. They've also got independent directors. One of the only reasons you need independent directors is to uplist. They uplisted from the pink to the QX. I'm sure that's why they're there. They would need these if they were going to uplist to the major exchange. But since they just delisted themselves, I doubt they're going to be doing that anytime soon. Now, I told you this company's into golf. They've got indoor driving ranges and they got regular golf courses. Looking at one of their most recent financials, they tell us here that puttery venues are indoor venues typically located in urban and suburban dining and entertainment districts. On November 4th of last year, we opened our fifth puttery location in Chicago. The company's traditional golf segment is one of the largest operators of traditional golf properties in the United States. As of September last year, the company owned, leased, or managed 53 traditional golf properties across nine states with over 42,000 members and over 2.5 million rounds played at our properties during the nine months ended September 30th, 2022. Folks, I don't know if you play golf, but it ain't cheap. Playing golf is an expensive hobby. And if they've got 2.5 million rounds played in nine months, they are making some money. No doubt about that. And you know, a curious piece of information here. Do you know there is more property for private golf clubs than there is for public parks? Right. Just doesn't seem fair. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Oh, that's not good. Huge drop, my God. Dropping from 333,000 shares down to 76,000 shares. Definitely under the radar, not being paid attention to. No love here. All right, what do we got here for share structure? Oh, I didn't look this one up. I'm going to have to go look this one up, folks. If I find it, I will put it right up there. If I don't find it, I'll put three question marks there so you know I didn't forget about you. But we know it's going to be under 92 million. That's as close as I can get right now. Financials. Well, they should be making some money with all them rounds they're playing. Pretty steady, as a matter of fact. They're doing about a quarter million dollars every year. Don't forget those three zeros we got to put behind any of the numbers down here. And looking at the quarterly for 2022, 68,000, 86,000, 88,000. So they're making money. They're generating revenues regularly. Nothing huge changing here, but it is steady income. Disclosures. All right, we've got a few disclosures over here. 
All of these 8Ks, this 25 PAS SA, all of these are for their delisting, moving off of the major exchange, coming down to the OTC, and uplisting. That is all of that. The one good piece of news here is this 13G. Remember what a 13G is. That is beneficiary ownership. That means a new investor has come in. As a matter of fact, there was two of them in this one. Two investors came in, bought enough shares to own now 7% of the company. Whenever you have new investors come in and become partners with the company, you know something good is going on. And let's take a look at that news. All right, as I said, they delisted from the New York Stock Exchange back here in December. And then they were preparing for a grand opening of a new puttery, an indoor driving range in Pittsburgh. And we really don't need to look at that. You know what that's all about. So you've got new ownership, you've got regular revenues coming in, and they have been demoted by their own hand, though it doesn't seem to be hurting them very much. But really, it is the chart that caught my attention. And it's the chart I want to share with you. Let me show you what we got going on here. So let's take a look at ticker DSHK. Six month, four hour chart as usual. We got a high bubble six months ago of $1.97, a huge fall, predominantly under the 200 all this time, and hit a low here at the beginning of January of 15 cents. Now you can see right here, we had a huge fall with a lot of volume come in right here. She crept across the floor, hit this low bubble, and then had a change of heart and attitude, started pushing up, got over that 50 day SMA, and has launched her up over the 200. Now, if I take a resistance support line and draw it right here from where she fell, you can see she came right back up to it. Exactly. What does this look like to you? Does that look like maybe a cup and a handle? It very well could, and that's what I'm thinking we got here, folks, is a cup and handle. If you look at it, you can see we had a huge drop just like you see here. She crossed the floor, came back up exactly to where she fell. Now we have our handle. This is where we look for the pop right here to get back up over that line and then get a huge run. You see this all the time and that's why we're looking at this folks. I think we could see a nice pop off of this cup and handle. So when you look at the chart, you can see that right now she is sitting on top of the 50 above her 200. She got up over the 200 tagged it once, floating on her nine day. Now, right now she is under the nine day SMA, but on top of her 50 over 200, still looking good. Though things are a bit weak on our technicals. Everything is kind of pushing down except the RSI. 20 day, one hour view. Nice run right here. She was above the 200, came way underneath it and popped hard. Didn't like that at all overreacted from 19 cents to 63 cents. Fell back down to her 50 day SMA, been negotiating with that, has fallen under it and is right now smack dab between the 50 and the 200 day SMA, looking like she wants to go up, looking at our nine day SMA. Our technical show she's trying to come up. There's not a lot of force here, but you can see we do have a crossover on our MACD already pushing up with the green bar starting to accumulate. Five day, five minute. Ooh, not a whole lot of excitement here. We've fallen from 44 cents down to 35 cents. She's been under a 50 day SMA and is now working it. She's trying to get on top of it. Looks like she's there right now. She is, she's sitting on top of her 50 day SMA with our PPO showing that she is trying to grow. Our MACD has an imminent crossover right now. Our RSI is pushing up and we do have our spread there. You can see the blue line is going up and the red line is going down. So it doesn't look like it has a lot going on for it right now, but she is in the place to start moving. We've got new investors in the company. Yeah, she has been demoted, but she's making lots of money and she's pushed herself up to the QX. I think she did this for smart reasons, not bad reasons. So I would keep my eye on DSHK. Once that volume comes in, you could see a breakout on this. Shit. Hopefully you're remembering that we're not dealing with day trades here. We're dealing with swing trades. Now that's not to say some of the stocks we look at won't run the very next day. Very well could. We even seen a pop while we were looking at the charts today. So yeah, it could happen. 
But these are basically supposed to be swing trades, a few days, maybe a couple weeks, which avails you the opportunity to build your positions. If you're gonna be holding a stock for 10 days, 14 days, the chances of it having a dip between now and then are likely it's most likely gonna happen. So rather than buy everything right now, watch that dip and go, oh God, I'm losing money. Only buy 30% right now. Get that good price right now. And then when it dips, get excited and buy another 30% at a better price. And when that inevitable climb comes that we had our eye on, you're gonna have a better price than if you had bought it all initially. Remember folks, due diligence, it is fun. Whether you're reading the news or you're looking at charts, you never know what you're gonna find. The more you know, the more you're gonna grow. See ya.